So the Canon M6 Mark II is the highest megapixel APS-C size camera ever made in line with the Canon 90D. And because of that, I felt the need to go through my entire EFM lens collection and shoot sample photos and put them all side by side and see which lenses can actually resolve enough definition to take advantage of that 32 megapixel sensor. Look at the overall clarity, look at the color representation, and look at the point where diffraction comes in and ruins your images. And then when we come back at the end after you've seen the sample footage, I'll go over all the different lenses, what I thought, which ones I thought were best. And if you're looking at buying a lens for the M6 Mark II or the M50 or or one of the other cameras in this range, I'll tell you based on the type of photography or video you do, which lens I would recommend. So now you're here again knocking at my door. A little too late for, I'm sorry for. The lights went out cause you kept cutting the cord and I started to fade into your gray see i finally opened up my eyes and i saw me coming back to life that i'd be better without you inside it's time to be someone i want to recognize first lens I want to talk about and the first one that was up in the samples was the 32 millimeter f1.4 this was by far the sharpest lens nothing else was really even that close the 22 millimeter wasn't that far off but to resolve the full detail of his sensor I think that is definitely the one lens that does it it is a really well engineered uh, lens by Canon but it's pretty expensive and depending on what sort of video and photographer you are, I may or may not recommend that lens. Uh, the other lens that was just so good and I think we've known it for so long is this 22 millimeter F2. It really was nearly as sharp as the 32 millimeter lens and it was, you know, it's half the price. It is an incredible lens. It's a lens that I have often said you could buy the entire camera system just to use this lens. It's, it's really that good. Uh, the next lens up was the 11 to 22. This was probably by far the biggest disappointment. I don't know if it was just my copy of the lens or what, but the images weren't great to begin with. Diffraction creeped in, I think, at 7.1, uh, f-stop 7.1 really this lens felt like kind of a disaster and it's often been the darling of the vlogging world and something that people have talked about the image quality either they're wrong or I've just got a bad copy but it just didn't see that seem to be there for my lens the 18 to 55 lens that was some um, that was a you know it was better than the 15 to 45 it wasn't spectacular but 
yeah, it was it was pretty good. I think it's a good video lens. Uh, once again, the image quality wasn't great. It's not resolving the whole 32 and a half megapixels, but I would say it is better than the 15 to 45 lens. Now, the 15 to 45, well, I suppose it sort of performed like we expected. It, you know, it really gets a lot of flack. It's not the sharpest lens. Unfortunately, is the most useful focal range of all these lenses. This is really the do anything lens, and it probably had the worst quality image or on par with the 11 to 22 as the worst quality image. Now the 55 to 70, this to me was a big surprise. I was really impressed with the image quality on this lens. I, I didn't expect it to be that good. And I think if you're shooting telephoto, sports, kids, racing cars, what have you, if you need a telephoto lens, it's nice that, that they've got one that is actually this good in the range. So I was super impressed by that. That was a real surprise for me. Now the Canon 50 millimeter, the Nifty 50, I mean, it's sort of a universally known and loved. Image quality was good without being great. Uh, I mean, I think for the price point, you know, you would consider having one. And, uh, and getting down to that f1.8, a great low light lens. So if you want something for portraits, you don't wanna to spend too much, you want something for low light, this really is a good budget option lens and it's been a good budget option lens for the entire Canon lineup for years. Now the 40 millimeter, the shorty 40, this to me was the big surprise. Like this was sharper than the 50 millimeter. It was probably just behind the 22 millimeter in image sharpness, but it was still really, really good. And I think it gives you an alternative if you wanted to buy the 32 millimeter, which actually I don't have sitting here. It's, it's on the camera up there. If you were thinking about the 32 millimeter, but you just felt that was a little bit too expensive, you could buy this 40 millimeter and you could buy a generic adapter. Uh, there's a really good one I use and I will link it in the description below because it's only like 30 bucks and it works just as well as the original. I've used them side by side. But if you just got one of those generic adapters plus the 40 millimeter, half the price of the 32 millimeter, and it is a pretty good lens. The images coming out of this were really pretty good. So who should buy what lens? This is kind of what I was doing this video for, uh, let you know who should buy what. The first thing I would say is if you don't have the 22 millimeter lens, you need to own that. That is the best budget. I mean, it's one of the sharpest lenses, it's one of the cheapest lenses, one of the smallest lenses in the entire lineup. It's just a no brainer. If you don't own the 22 millimeter, it's great for photo, it's great for video. It's, it is the lens you buy after the kit lens, no questions asked. What do you buy next? Well, if you are a sports photographer or you're shooting your kids uh, playing soccer or basketball or what have you, then the telephoto lens really impressed the 55 to 200. I really couldn't recommend that highly enough. It's still small and portable, but it is yeah a really good lens. I was so surprised at the quality of the images coming out of this. This is a great telephoto lens. So. If you are shooting stuff that you need telephoto, I wouldn't hesitate to grab this lens. And once you've got the 22 millimeter for photography, I think adapting this 40 millimeter would be the next thing. Like if you didn't want to spend the money on the 32 millimeter, and to be honest, for the price of the 40 millimeter and the 22 millimeter and an adapter, you're still only at about the same price as the 32 millimeter. And I think you get a lot more functionality out of these two lenses. And even though I do have the 32 millimeter, now that I've seen how sharp this 40 is, sometimes when I'm walking around doing street photography, I've got the 22 millimeter and the other lens I generally bring with me is the 32, but there's only 10 millimeters between those lenses. That's not a huge amount of difference. There's plenty of situations where when the 22 just doesn't quite reach enough, the 32 doesn't reach far enough either. And the 40 millimeter might be the lens to go with. So. I'm gonna try walking the city with the 22 and the 40 now, and I think that could be a really good combination for street photography, family portraits, family photos, birthday parties. Uh, these are two really, really good lenses, and while not as sharp as the 32 millimeter, they are small, they're compact, the image quality is still very, very good, they're half the price, I think this could be a really, really good combination. And there is the 18 to 55. If you're a video shooter and you're just not happy with the 15 to 45, the 18 to 55 is a little bit sharper. I do like the images a little bit better. 
and for a lot of the video stuff that I don't really need the wide angle, if I don't need that extra 15 millimeters, the extra three millimeters that the 15 millimeter gives you, then I would pick up one of these 18 to 55s and you're getting them used on eBay for about a hundred bucks. They are so cheap. So that, that is one I would recommend if you're primarily a video shooter and you just want a little bit more sharpness, I think this could be a really good lens. If you're into the M6 Mark II or the FM system or any sort of budget photography or videography, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That's what I do here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.